you be, you're going to have you for a few weeks. That's good. <coughs> yeah. Yep. Got to get so together. So we'll get together. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I, I'm interested in the scene you want to talk about. Yeah. Now. Any chance of Robert coming in? I talked to him for the seventh. So probably not. And welcome. Thank you very much to Conversations. <coughs> Pleasure to welcome to the program an old friend of mine and of Conversations and the World, and that being Sidney Greenfield, <coughs> Ph.D., Anthropology, and he is an Emeritus Professor from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and he's also co-chair of the Columbia University Seminar on Brazil, and we're going to be talking about things, as I understand, having talked to Sidney just before we sat down here, in a big comprehensive uh, context, trying to understand <coughs> the state of the world in a large comprehensive right. way. And uh, Sydney, so good to see you. Harold, it's a pleasure to be here again. And it's a big bite, but let me start with an observation. Okay, go ahead, take it most away. Most discussion programs, conversation programs, usually start with somebody who has written a book or written a paper, and it's, this is used as a point of departure. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, writing books, which I have written, and Many. articles, which yeah. I have written, is a matter, uh, it's a matter of zeroing in on specifics and detail. Yeah. And as a result, it's very difficult to stand back and look at the broader issues. Uh -huh. So as a kind of experiment, okay. I thought we would take the opportunity to stand back and look. And let me suggest, given my own background mm -hmm. as an anthropologist, uh, my training tends to lead me, this is what the way I was trained, mm -hmm. uh, to stand back and look at Homo sapien mm -hmm. in a broad variety of ways, what mm -hmm. anthropologists used to call the four field approach. Uh, that is, we look at the biological evolution of the organism, mm -hmm. we look at the prehistory, we look at the linguistic diversity, and we look at human culture. Uh -huh. Well, if you use an imagery that you had with another of your guests of standing back out of space, mm -hmm and watching what happened with the evolution of life forms on this particular planet. Mm -hmm. And you begin to look at the emergence, the splitting off of Homo sapiens mm -hmm. as a unique form of life. Mm -hmm. What you begin to see is this biological organism that lives in social groups, mm -hmm. that is capable of symboling and conceptualizing his own place in the world, beginning to develop a number of different ways of living, each characterized by uh, everything ranging from producing goods and services to distributing them to uh, that includes a view of the world. Mm -hmm. And what we have seen as we have looked out is a great diversity in ways humans organize themselves and live. Mm -hmm. But over the last five, 6,000 years, there has been a great reduction in these varieties of humanity accelerating in the 20th century. And reduction I, in the variety. In the variety, in huh. the diversity of human, cultural, and socially organizational forms. Hmm, that's interesting in itself. Yeah. Uh, going along mm -hmm. with a reduction in the number of distinct languages. In other words, if we were to go back and use, say, 10,000 year intervals uh, since the beginning almost of Homo sapien, mm -hmm. what we'd see is the great spread of diverse groups adapting to local environments with this great range of diversity. And over the last five to 10,000 years accelerating a reduction, an increase in total numbers of human beings and fewer and fewer linguistic groups and cultural that's groups. Really, that's really interesting. I wonder, because you said you take a large thing, and I heard you say, among other things, the, the evolution of the species and that sort of thing. Um, wh what is your understanding or your colleagues' understanding of when Homo sapien emerged out of the evolutionary process? Now and I yeah. Was it Homo <coughs> erectus? Was it Homo habilis up there? Wh what date would you give to when our species 
appeared. Okay. Let me back off from that okay. and say, okay. once again, mm -hmm. I could go into, as any of my colleagues can go into, the details of what we know mm -hmm. about the dates, places, etc. What I'm trying to look at, uh -huh. just use this as a perspective yeah. to begin to get a handle on the cultural world we're living in today. We live in very interesting times. That's for sure. And if you take a look at what the major factors in play are, one of the places to start is to look at the European Enlightenment of the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. You because were okay. what mm -hmm. you find there mm -hmm. is people like Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Adam Hume. Smith, Hume, Ricardo, and others began to develop something that was an extension of the scientific revolution, right. focusing on the human scene. And what they were doing was rebelling against religion, not religion generally, but particularly the Roman Catholic Church that had set the bounds for how society was to be organized for almost a thousand years, primarily in Europe. That's right, okay. after the fall of the Roman Empire. A after the fall of the Roman Empire. Right. But what we have to understand is that Christianity that began as a religion of a small oppressed group of people mm -hmm. became the religion of the empire. After and Constantine. After Constantine and no. provided the world view for mm -hmm. Europe mm -hmm. as it grew and expanded along with Roman Catholicism, mm -hmm. conceived of as the one true belief in the world. Mm -hmm. In other words, it was universalistic mm -hmm. and monopolistic. Mm -hmm. In the 15th and 16th century, through the kingdoms of Portugal and Spain, mm -hmm. this worldview was carried all over the world and imposed on people primarily in Latin America, but off to the Philippines and other parts of the world where Roman Catholicism was imposed, the beginnings of what today we call globalization, mm -hmm. was imposed on peoples from a variety of different cultural traditions and ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. All right, back to Europe, what you found is Protestant Reformation yeah, right. takes place, yeah. and this leads to a clash within Christianity, Protestant versus Catholic, as to who has the true view of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Enlightenment thinkers come along after a period of approximately a century or so when Catholics are fighting Protestants and so on down the line. And what they do is come up with a new view of the world mm -hmm. that's based on a new creation myth, a secular creation myth. Scientific the vision, revolution? Or no? No, it's, well, well, it comes out of the scientific yeah. revolution. Mm -hmm. They claim it to be scientific. Right but it's really not mm -hmm. in terms of the way we understand science in the sense that it starts from a set of assumptions. The assumption of human beings as isolated individuals living in a state of nature and rationally creating society. In Hobbes's hands, where individuals give up their individual rights creating the Leviathan, mm -hmm. the state which then is responsible for providing order for ending this war, this interminable war that they're living with. Mm -hmm. Adam Smith takes the same imagery and gives us the view of the market of a pre-social human being rationally deciding on purchasing and selling goods and services. Now, what's important to understand is that there never existed a pre-social world in which individuals rationally made choices to create human societies. Never happened. Mm -hmm. But 
once this is created in cultural terms and once it's accepted, we have created institutions based on this. Right. For example, the assumption then that all societies are organized in nation states, mm -hmm. which then are composed of individuals who made this contract with the state. Mm -hmm. Now, this does not exist in most of the world. It never has existed, and it still doesn't exist because humans are organized into kinship groups and social groups that form tribal groups that eventually Clan, become yeah. clans, ethnic groups, and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. But to the good fortune of the Enlightenment people, they lived in societies like England and Holland and Scotland mm -hmm. where there were People were organized into small nuclear families primarily and then formed voluntary associations where they needed larger concentrations for workforces for other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And this became the organizational form out of which Western Europe developed. Mm -hmm. Of course, what this led to with, the, with industrialization, as you well know, we created an entity called the factory in which individuals came out of their nuclear families to go into a separately conceptualized space, the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, most human societies, when you look across the board, organized work groups in terms of kinship, in terms of clan organization. That is, they constantly used other forms of organization. Well, given the fact that Spain and Portugal had moved off to colonize the world and were growing rich, mm -hmm. the Enlightenment societies reorganized the world, and what they did eventually was to take from Spain and Portugal what under the papacy, the Pope in 1494 and the treaties of Tordesillas mm -hmm. had divided between the kingdoms of Spain and Portugal. Right. So we've been living since the 15th, 16th century with a war in which Europeans had been fighting each other for controlling the rest of the world, mm -hmm. and with colonialism, and imperialism, what they have done is carry, one, the Christian view of the world, but more significantly, the Enlightenment view of the world, because in the Enlightenment view, you make a place for religion, meaning Christianity, in the private domain, this notion of separation of church and state. So what you then do is build institutions that enable you to organize society and, as we've talked before, political economy became the primary focus of the institutions built out of the Enlightenment. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, that's really interesting. There's a fellow I've referred to on a number of occasions. I, I, don't forget, uh, Edward, I think, I'm not sure first name, but it's Herman. He wrote a book that is a serious historian anthropological leanings and that sort of thing. But he said how, uh, the title of the book is How the Scots okay. Invented the Modern World and Everything in It. Uh, the and he claimed it was more than anything else, the Scottish Enlightenment with Hume and Smith and the, the steam engine, more than the, the, well, more than, more than right. the, the, the French right. even the Enlightenment. The point is you know. that the Scots, the English, the French, and then to the United States provided an imagery, these collective series of this collective series of thinkers of, provided of the, a, the image of the modern world uh -huh. that became a specific cultural form. And they claim it as uh, historically legitimate in terms of the way the world is reorganized based upon notions of uh, of, of, of human nature, even right. they would be. Yeah, yeah right. because I, and, and you extend to, your uh, world view to uh, become, quote, right. human nature. Yeah, Herman said that they invented everything, like the nation state and the idea of capitalism itself and the other kinds of things were mostly from that little part of Northwest Europe. And that's then right. that's what, and the institutions, the International Monetary Fund, the, all these kind of things all are basically of projections. 60% of, of the signers of the American Declaration of Independence were Scots. Mm -hmm. It was a heavy Scottish Enlightenment uh, impression yeah. upon it. And now the United States, 60, what, uh, 1770, whenever, 76 or 89, whenever, 
a couple 230 years or so we set up a system that's been in place for about 230 years before in Ro in in Europe uh, fall after the fall of the Roman Empire you had dynastic states and loyalty was through the personages of that people got their sense of identity of that it was a feudal order that kind of thing and yeah. then that was uh, the, the, the mi a lot of people were not well served by that. There was industrialization coming, and then they informed the, the French uh, culture mm -hmm. and Les Miserables of the French, <laughs> and they made a revolution. The French Revolution cut off Louis XVI's head. He was a representative of the Anjan regime right. that had been in place okay. for a thousand years okay. and thought of as being legitimate historically. Okay. The United States is now the leader of the Enlightenment Revolution, okay. 230, th th Good. 230 years, and they may well form an enjant regime in terms okay. of the way the world is need well, be organized in terms of the march of history. Using is the a concept theme that might be worth of an enjant regime, uh -huh. uh, it's perfectly feasible to look at the leadership, the elites of each cultural tradition, right. dominating. And then what you have to look at is, what about the rest of the people? How are they incorporated into this? And what we find at certain periods in history, institutions break down. They right. no longer work. Again, if you take this anthropologist perspective. Maybe because perspective, of the march of history. Well, if you take this anthropological perspective, yeah. things change. Uh -huh. Things change, and sometimes institutions created at one point that seem to work well mm -hmm. no longer work. That's right. These break down, and then there are transformations. And it may very well be that we are living during, at the end of, it's hard to say because yeah. only time will enable us yeah. to see this, in which another major transformation yeah. is occurring yeah. because these institutions created out of the Enlightenment mm -hmm. that are primarily organizing ourselves in nation states yeah. and the industrial production of goods and services mm -hmm. are no longer serving most of humanity. That's right. And if you take it just in terms of the model of the nation state, as I said before, most of humanity was not organized in nation states composed of individuals oh. independent of other kind of identities and affiliations. Mm -hmm. It was only with the colonialism and imperialism that this was extended mm -hmm. to incorporate other people who primarily at the end of World War II mm -hmm. rebelled against colonialism mm -hmm. and unfortunately had they had the no Nations. greater imagery mm -hmm. than to accept the Enlightenment forms mm -hmm. and organize as nation states under the umbrella of the United Nations. Right, now, right. most of these places, the new nations, mm -hmm. are made up of people who are parts of kinship groups and tribal groups and ethnic groups and others that do not feel an identity toward a nation state that in so many cases is the product of European colonialism. Mm. And we could bounce around oh, yeah, uh, the world mm. for specific examples there are of many, this. Yeah. Okay. Iraq for would be one. Iraq is a mm. classic uh -huh. example. That would draw where maps we on the line today on the map. in the United States think of Iraq as a nation state uh -huh. like the United States uh -huh. is a nation state. A lot of people had come to Europe and studied at universities and so forth and had imbibed the idea of the nation state and carried it back from where they were That's right. and made revolutions against the colonial masters in the name of their national liberation their struggle. Their national liberation struggle. And they struggle. called the nation the nation of Egypt, the nation of Libya, the nation of That's India. Right. And this That's sort of right. thing, and they're really not at all in sync with what the people are. Although they've tried to establish those, they try so to have establish. We have 198, I think, very do we? often by force. Uh -huh. And just as the colonial authorities mm -hmm. enforced order with the club, central governments today are trying to do the same thing. The brutality of Saddam Hussein, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. I mean. Scholars have known for the last 25, 30 years or more, the only way this place hung together 
was under the brutal hand of Saddam Hussein, well, in the same sense that the Soviet Socialist Republics held together Stalin. under Stalin's oh. brutal hand. Well, or yeah, you can go like that, and because history is a very many splendid thing, <laughs> and anthropology even more so, maybe the anthropological take on it and everything. But you go, and then you could look at the United States of America. We, the, we remember the original document was the Confederate, the Articles of Confederation. There was great distrust of any centralized authority. A state's rights were very much into the various uh, way distrust of civil of <coughs> central authority, and then it came up, and then we had a united we had the United States, and we had our constitution, and, all, and then there was economic interest, and there was a big conflict between an industrializing portion and those based on plantation slavery in the South, and mm -hmm. so we had to have a civil war. And it was Abraham Lincoln who is generally recognized as our greatest president who fought to keep the Union rather than letting it fly into its disparate parts, which is a, thing, a centrifugal thing that has to be measured against. So you want to have an entity that's vi viable and so forth, but he kept the Union together. And right. he is recognized as our greatest president okay. for having kept the Union okay. against uh, together against the, uh, the, the let me tides give that you would pull it apart. Let me give you a slightly different way of looking at this American history. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll be able to play it back into the present in another way. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, the American colonies were really formed by corporations. East India? Corporations that were started in the Netherlands and in England mm -hmm. to colonize. Again, this idea that in contrast to with the way Portugal and Spain settled their colonies out of the house, the royal household, essentially. Yeah, from the dynastic. There, there was a dynastic tie what in the for a while. What the kings mm -hmm. of the Netherlands and Great Britain did was charter corporations to establish these settlements. This created the first corporations known in the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when these, the colonists broke away from England and set up the United States, they used the Enlightenment model to set up a society and created an economy. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting characteristics of how we have organized the production and di the, actually it's the production of goods and services is using this corporate model. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the United States, as in England during Adam Smith's times, mm -hmm. small groups, individuals, mm -hmm. or just groups of individuals were able to start productive enterprises using technology. There were very, very rarely did you have to pull together large numbers of individuals Pin to factory. finance, to finance yeah. an endeavor. Mm -hmm. The corporation chartered by the legitimate government mm -hmm. became the way to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But corporations were chartered with responsibilities. It was primarily in the 19th century in the United States that the legal system, through a series of legal decisions, gave more and more autonomy to the corporations. Private sector. No, it's not just private sector. Uh, right. Private versus public is one opposition. Right. But public and corporation is another opposition. Okay. The okay. corporations mm -hmm. then were chartered and were given more and more rights to the point at which today they're given all the rights of the individual member of society mm. with none of the responsibilities. They're, a person. they're seen as a person, they're the seen Korean as a person mm -hmm. with rights mm -hmm. and no responsibilities other than to maximize their own profits. That's pretty that's pretty license to steal. Well, this is all <laughs> part of what happened. Mm -hmm and developed out of these Enlightenment institutions. Mm -hmm. That is, within the framework of the nation state, corporations that originally were producing goods and services grew and grew, and as a person without responsibilities legally, what they were able to do was to dismember 
themselves, take pieces and sell them off, bring in other pieces, mm -hmm. reconfigure themselves in ways that no human being can do, but mm -hmm. legally they still had these rights. Well, you, you had to have, I was thinking that the other night in the shower, as a matter of fact, you had to have <laughs> some, you had to have some way for the corporation to keep going beyond the person like Mr. Ford with a lifetime of die. an individual. No, he was going to die. Yeah, yeah so the lifetime of an individual. So, so these are legal persons mm -hmm. who have an infinite lifetime. Uh -huh. So they could do anything in the name of getting a profit unless enlightenment institutions, unless government restrains them. Well, you got a lot of enlightenment thinkers like Ricardo just saying comparative advantage, go do whatever you can and it's a competition and the best and the, you know, that kind of thing, you know, chump eater or came along and you got competition and all these kind of things, the economic theory uh, fed into a, f a view of, uh, of economics that was uh, very politically uh, volatile and uh, there's the, the situation, and the modern world. It's like back to Mr. Herman, the Scott, or they invented the modern world, you, know, you could say the institutions thereof, which are called modernism, and that's where the blame comes from, okay. and they try to impose it upon all the world, and that's a pretty fixed But they, they did it successfully. Yeah, they did it successfully, and that's and the, what happened and they count themselves, this is an important thing, it seems to me, it would be worth, they count themselves, the United States particularly, particularly when you get an arrogance of power like we have re recently and so forth, but it's there maybe systemically and so forth, but they count themselves as historically legitimate as the enjant regime dynastic states counted themselves historically, re uh, historically legitimate, and they assume they're legitimate against the other forces in the world, and we have a conflict going on now because a lot of people are beginning to sense that that assumption of legitimacy for those that for the United States of America and its allies and so forth, they do not have a vision relative to what the future requires. Okay. So you're coming to where the legitimacy, rather than saying, well, this policy was wrong or that group is bad or something, it's the system itself is wrong and inadequate uh, to what the future what requires, and that's dangerous for the people who are in control now it's what because they do not have a vision that the future requires. It's what these institutions were transformed into that has become the problem. This is taking the original vision of the Enlightenment and seeing the global reach of these institutions mm -hmm. and primarily new technologies yeah. that have made for new possibilities right. and we've reached the point that it may very well be that these institutions are no longer workable in the contemporary world. Right, now that's a, that's a, that, that is a premise that usually you do not hear okay. in the news or anything. It is just assumed that the international community the Washington Consensus, the international corporations, all of that, Soviet Union fell, China's been co-opted, that kind of <coughs> thing, that our model is one that is historic. We are legitimate, and these, ma these, these you know, rebels and so forth that will do insurgencies and that sort of thing are illegitimate. A, yeah. lot, of that, a lot of that thing directed against us, we never hear within the political dialogue, the historical, uh, even from the, from the, uh, from the, um, from the intellectual classes, we don't. We just assume with sacerdotal certainty the 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 almost sacred nature of our constitution. That's right. Uh, Charles Baird, the inter interpretation of the economic interpret, notwithstanding or anything, but that it's almost like holy writ, the mm -hmm. constitution. That that is somehow something that came into being, and it's it's you know. But it is that the institutions, the very institutions and assumptions that are built in to the nature of this country and so forth are not adequate to what the future requires. Okay. That they are illegitimate. Okay. They are illegitimate. Uh, okay. And they do never brought in that but question that in a okay. systemic way right. they have right. to be questioned okay. except by some religious elements around the world that bring it into question. Right. I think that's one of the things you wanted okay. to talk about. Right. Okay. But now what out, out of the Enlightenment, <coughs> we, meaning the United States and Great Britain primarily, are bringing to the world progress. 
and our legitimacy is in terms of this enlightenment vision of an upwardly sloping line August where things Tom. get better and better all the time. August Tom. And what this has become translated mm. into materially is that we produce more and more things and this is the basis of our legitimacy we are bringing civilization and progress to all of the underdeveloped people the white man in the burden. world the it's a continuation it's a continuation, it's extend, the a continuation of the white man's burden and without the racial focus was there a thing positivism and do i associate okay. it with august comp august comp and positivism that? was and one variant you know, 19th of this. century kind of right. thing and the idea that it's a steady rock up mount uh, right glory what 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 these all are are translations and transformations of the basic enlightenment world view uh -huh. extending it into later and later periods yeah, I with the assumption yeah. that this the this world view is the best for all of humanity yeah, the only so every thing, it's the only everything has to be taken within that context that's right that's what an enchant regime does okay and they seem okay. we can do anything within the context of what we say okay. makes available to you and then that's the problem we're up against now okay. in the world. Now, if, maybe it is. Maybe the United States is a shining, you know, maybe the United States it's is It's a shining a, example a of, a of this view of the world. Right. And maybe it has, and they will take those ideas that apply to their system, they do, and they make certain, we've made advances, we went to the moon, and all okay. this kind of, we make advances, and they will just assume that their ideas are not only representative of their social organization they came upon, it's human nature. Okay. It's based upon... However, Enduring principles of the okay. way nature and the cosmos However, are constructed. However, there the are same still fundamentalism, others. Right. There are still others, and this becomes a clash of ethnocentrisms. Right. But the point that I want to bring in here is that the pride and joy of this Enlightenment thinking mm -hmm. and our view of the world as leaders of the world has been in terms of economics and production. Right. That right. we have created so much more. We've created so much stuff. And look what the and economists. We have. And we have. We, this this oh. is true. Oh. And the economists have provided, out of Adam Smith and Ricardo, mm -hmm. have provided the models mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. But some a couple of interesting things have happened well, it might be that in that recent years. That's the condition under which it happened to happen. But a couple of things have happened in recent years. Yeah. One is the excessive growth of corporations mm -hmm. to the point at which the world corporations are challenging the nation state for power and authority. Yeah, the nation state is a bother. Well, that's right. David Corden wrote a book to when corporations rule, rule the, the world. world, and they seem to be the case. And and they're like pirates on the open sea. They have to. They don't have to uh -huh. worry about. It's any not a matter of being pirates. Oh. It's being carrying these institutions right. to their logical extreme. Right. Right. But not only have the productive corporations moved beyond needing. The nations, what they need the nation state for, by the way, is to provide authority. Yeah, okay. To control uh -huh. populations uh -huh. to live in their terms. And to you, respect yeah. uh -huh. the law which says that corporations are like human beings in perpetuity uh -huh. with none of the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. That's codified in the law uh -huh. and nation states, they need to enforce this. The very to thing the that the Bush life. doctrine uh -huh. is uh -huh. all about. Uh -huh. This is what we are doing in the privatized world of corporations. But uh -huh. something else has happened uh -huh. that we rarely acknowledge and bring into the mix. Uh -huh. And that is the development of the world of finance, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has transcended the Mere economy uh -huh. of production and distribution of goods and services. Right. That is by being able to mobilize mm -hmm. vast amount of capital mm -hmm. that have been collected through foundations uh -huh. bringing money together, pension plans yeah. bringing huge amounts right. of capital. Right. Individuals have been able to borrow this and buy 
and transform corporations creating the world's stock markets, mm -hmm. which are essentially gambles on the future raising of value mm -hmm. of companies, currencies, mm -hmm. resources, uh -huh. anything you can think of. And what we have is a kind of casino crapshoot. Crap crap yeah. But that's where the money is being uh, yeah, made right, today. Right, right, yeah. And we are no longer a manufacturing economy in the United in States. In the United States, no, we send it off we're, to China, we're sending it off Japan, around the world. Asia, and yeah. what we are doing mm -hmm. is the buying and selling, which interestingly adds absolutely nothing mm -hmm. to the value of goods and services mm -hmm. being produced in the world. But the people who are making money on this uh -huh. are making more money than has ever been dreamed Richer of. Than and when we do stratification uh -huh. systems, uh -huh. this upper 1% mm -hmm. that's getting most of the wealth uh -huh. while everybody else is getting less and it's less not is in, getting uh -huh. it out of the casino economy yeah, yeah. by gambling and wagering and producing absolutely nothing uh -huh. and we haven't put this into the mix uh -huh. of thinking about the future of the society this vision mm -hmm. of the enlightenment uh -huh. and its kind of progress uh -huh. so what's happening in reality mm -hmm. is those who are producing are getting a smaller and smaller piece of the pie, but more importantly, the corporations have already destroyed alternative <coughs> systems of production. Mm. Small farmers all over the world, the hunters and gatherers, anyone who could produce enough to be able to survive mm -hmm. has been destroyed. And they're at the behest of the corporations. And they're at the behest of the corporations uh -huh. who are at the behest of the financial markets. Yeah, that's really something. They, it used to be in the old days if the Duke, like if the Duke on a feudal estate, if the Duke got in a crap game and came up uh, snake eyes, the the serfs went along with the uh, the serfs just went along went along with the the loss because they have no choice. They had no choice, and it's more or less that just way as with the people most of in the modern world now. Have no choice except mm -hmm. except with the revitalization. Not of religion again, uh -huh. but of fundamentalist Christianity and fundamentalist Islam. Okay. Christianity well. has been able essentially to turn its back on the Enlightenment image, on the consequences of it, but to say we have a better view of how society should be organized. Christianity has? You mean you, uh, who, Christ, where, who, where, the Pope? Or what are you talking about? Oh, two variants. Mm, yeah, pope. The Pope no. is trying no. to return Europe and the world to accepting the leadership of the papacy mm -hmm. going back over the last thousand years yeah. and saying, no, we will tell you how to run the state. Mm -hmm. in our Christian imagery. Where was that in the last few the decades? The Protestants, yeah. mm -hmm. primarily the Pentecostals, uh -huh. have been saying, you're wrong, you're wrong. We have the vision as presented in the Bible by God. Okay, now it's fundamentalist in both cases. Do you think in the, in the, in the side of the corporation that they have a, a mindset that is market fundamentalism? or economic fundamentalism, uh, the, the, the no. people, the malefactors of great wealth and so forth, no, have a view that they have a fundamentalist thing. Because something has to be added, uh -huh. and that is that Christianity has an end game that appears in the book of Revelations. Oh, yeah, John. Yeah. Ah, mm. and what that means mm -hmm. is, yes, these enlightenment institutions can no longer work Forget about them. Why? Because the rapture is going to occur any day now, yeah. and all of the good believers are going to be transported to heaven 
Well, under the yeah, right, like that. Okay, you're going to be a so judgment you, and this, Armageddon this and all this nasty this stuff. This alternative the view, trial. this alternative view of the world, this Christian fundamentalist view of the world, uh -huh. has, doesn't have to think about a new view of how to they reorganize go back to the, the tried world. And true thing of the old. You go back, and what in effect you are preaching and successfully preaching with the tremendous conversion of peoples who you can say are the downtrodden because you, what you, they focus yeah, right. on That's are the poorest. These are the ones who legitimately are saying, you know something, something this enlightenment view of the world yeah. holds little hope for us. Because it does. Because it Old does. They're right. Grab none. The yeah. alternative being waved in front of them yeah. is convert and believe God will make you rich yeah. and accept Christ and you too will be carried to heaven okay. any day what now. About, what about the other things, if I may, along that line of the religion? You got the Pentecost. Well, you're very sensitive to that, I think, because Brazil is just galloping toward well, Pentecost. It's not only it's, it's the it's, all of Latin America, yeah. all of the world. Uh -huh. And remember, uh -huh. they are all they have also almost taken over the government of the United States uh -huh. in an alignment well, they, with the Republican Party. Yeah, it may be, in wane, it may be waning now, but they okay. sure have tried. And uh, that, kind and of that thing, raises yeah. the big question, uh -huh. what can be Bush's done? Background. Yes, background. but let us assume now that George Bush steps down in 2008 well, he's, he's and somebody happen. else is elected. Uh -huh. What do you think they will do to change the fact that we have been the leaders of institutions that Americans, more and more Americans and more and more people all over the world are realizing don't work anymore. Are not legitimate. Well, that's not their legitimate. legitimate. They're not legitimate right. because they don't work. Have, they, they don't work. Yeah. What they are doing right. is not providing this great wealth being produced mm -hmm. to people 80% but of the world population is not well served, and the trends are bad in that direction. That's right. So something's going to happen in that Something's going to happen. Let me ask you a long line. <laughs> you, got the, you got the revelation in the evangelicals. What about the fact that, what about the fact, just from a religious thing, although I want to get back to, I don't want to get away from the fact that there may be a step above the context of accepting things in historical context, short of all the spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. There might be an altered ontology right. or understanding. Yeah, okay. but, that's another thing. but what about the fact, like, for instance, uh, I understand they have in the, particularly the Shia and in Iran and that sort of thing, they have the idea of the 12th Imam. Okay. And also you have the tradition of the Judaism where they think there's going to be a Messiah. Messiah. So they can go, but they sort of gotten away from that and by that, going secular right, and so forth. But that's, and, that's and looking. Well, you know, hold it. Th you know think in, term, yeah, think so in terms of the religion. the evangelical thing resorting to but religion, the Shia. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all have a supernatural hope of salvation okay. for this world and the next. So you don't have to worry if you accept the fundamentalist but you put view. But you put a particular thing of fundamentalism on the Pentecostals who have the Revelation John, so okay. they play that up. But you have the same thing in Islam. Yes, this is what I want to get to. As opposed to Sunni, for yeah. instance. You've got okay. the Shia who believe in the 12th and you have all the Jews who believe in the Mashiach. And where is the Mashiach? Maybe the Mashiach okay. will come uh, and save us. You what know? that well, says. Well, they resort to that, but they don't seem to be resorting to that What that, that so says much. is in each of these religious traditions that, is expand, that are expanding mm -hmm. greatly, what you have is a view of the world that provides a solution, an alternative mm -hmm. to the failure of the Enlightenment okay. Institution. Well, that might be, now. okay. All right, now what about, if, could I bring up yeah. something? You're, yeah, you're, bring you're, up something. It's really interesting what you're saying. And because that, so all you, I'm trying to yeah, do right. is to Think set big, yeah. a problematic uh -huh. of saying, now, as we sit and look at this uh -huh. from outside, yeah. A lot of possibilities are on the table uh -huh. for the future in these interesting times. Uh -huh. We don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, there are possibilities out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. There's very little, by the way, coming out of the Enlightenment visionaries. Well, wait about, what about, let, let me back off for a minute or something like that. Marx say, didn't so work. we go, we go, and I wanted to begin <laughs> with 200,000 years as human society has appeared and 10,000 uh -huh. generations we get to a point where there's something qualitative going on in terms of the evolution of uh, 
extended techno consciousness, technology, productiveness, uh -huh. and so forth, and that the ontology, for want of a better term, we don't have a world, we don't have a word to describe that it hasn't been uh, taken over by some religious notion. Uh -huh. People have lived wondering, we have self-reflective conscience, what's it all about? So they've had read spiritual notions that encompass the whole universe, even mm -hmm. though it was coming out of ignorance. We didn't have ignorance, so we projected upon things as spiritual things and so forth. So we come, but we don't have a word to encompass a qualitatively transformed condition within which human institutions are evolving that is qualitatively different, mm -hmm. but does not resort to the spiritual things that right. we have resorted right. to out of history. We don't have comprehensive vision okay. of what's required okay. that could maybe instead of having uh, a, a system that is uh, not legitimate, that there could be introduced a, an alteration in which the plant, the way the planet is going to operate, that could be, let's just say, inclusive of everybody rather than so geared toward just those who are already in a favored position, one that would be liberating. And we have some thought like that. Talhar de Chardin spoke uh, of the all right. Noosphere. He I spoke may of I the mega this? point and convergence. There are some thoughts like that. And what about that? I, that's okay. spiritual. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get to spiritual. I wanted to get may, to may I, may I just economics, yeah, okay. maybe. Yeah, let, let me take this. Kelso, let, let, um, me, let me take this and say, uh, first place, what we have to understand is that the great strides in technology mm -hmm. that you're referring to mm -hmm. have made possible the transformation of the economy controlled by the corporations and the financial markets. Mm -hmm. Now, well, uh, in this sense, in this sense, yeah. technology may be looked at in one sense as the cause of the Enlightenment institutions failing. Now, what you, you're constantly trying to do and what others are constantly trying to do is to find in technology an alternative and what you're saying is, uh, and I think this is very true, that nobody has taken, nobody that I know anyway, has taken this perspective to look at things to be able to say, can we come up with an alternative within the Enlightenment framework uh -huh. that will subsume. subsume a number of other things, mm -hmm. and more important, when I raise the question, if we elected anybody you and I could choose mm -hmm. as President of the United States, right. there is really little that he or she could do in the face of the transformation of these institutions well, the institu and save them uh -huh. from no longer serving most of humanity so that we, as the leaders, become the place where people point the finger uh, as the enemy mm -hmm. for what is hurting us. Yeah. Now, and they what it know would take in their bones that there's something wrong with the zeitgeist, okay. within the evolution right. of the zeitgeist, and, and, and it's not right, so they want some vision, so they okay. resort to old Go back, vision. go yeah. back, yes, and because say, there's nothing remember else. There's nothing the provided 20th, within the secular realm right. of intellectual The discourse. 20th no century, uh -huh. there were a lot of experiments. Mm -hmm. The most a significant and, one, no, no, was Karl Marx oh, yeah, right. and the Soviet no. Revolution, yeah. which Came didn't work. Yeah. Well, and what mm. it did was provide for the support and the reinvigoration of the institutions or the way the institutions were formed today mm -hmm. as they exist. Mm -hmm. Now, when you raise the question of an alternative imagery, I go back and start where I started because I had the good fortune, as I said before, to study at Columbia University and to be able to study with Carl Polanyi yeah, and yeah, Conrad Ahrensberg, and who, uh, uh. who were focusing on just this question of finding an alternative uh -huh. to what was available and looking at the ethnographic record, when I said the anthropologist who sits back and looks at this great variety of ways in which humans have organized themselves, what they were trying to do is to say, can we find in other things that groups of humans invented something that we might be able to adapt 
as a future to what Polanyi had the great vision in his great transformation of yeah. seeing as something that was leading to the point of no longer being workable for most of humanity. Yeah. Well, this is played out. Yeah. Well, mm. my point... You it, also study with Carl Wittfogel. Right. Oriental despotism. Oriental despotism, which became one mm. ancient regime yeah. that also didn't work, mm -hmm. and yeah. this was all part of this. And but you see, we our, don't have... We don't have vision by we our so-called We don't so have leadership. any place uh -huh. institutionalized in our society right. where people are working on alternative views of the world. Mm. The think tanks we have are polemical the old think tanks yeah. arguing over details right, exactly. of this system. And that's all the news. That's all you see in the news. And that, so forth. That's all we want for vision. We do not have vision. Mr. Right. Uh, Mr. Bush Sr. said, I didn't understand the vision thing. They don't have a vision. And there the intellectual no community is not providing a vision. Because the intellectual is community is locked it, into career building, mm -hmm. focusing on details, can't pull back and see what is happening but in a broader can, picture, the and their careers depend upon funding now more from private industries, mm -hmm. the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of all of this, yeah, all than the old days where at least government provided support for the scholarly community. Yeah, they're all in the hire of the Duke. Or they're right. all in high, we're, 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 the, the assets are all owned by a tiny group of people and we're all picking up leaves on their estate. We depend upon, we, de we must be sycophant, we must go along with it, even, even if we internalize it only. We do, do that. So we're all in a certain That's sense. Right. Uh, in I think Margaret we need, Thatcher's we word, need there is no alternative. Yeah, as there they is see it. Tina. There is Tina. no alternative supposedly right. to the fact that we have these few people and, and those people do not have a vision. That's the right. point. And this is what we're now, crying what we do for is, find some is a place. vision. Mm -hmm. And of course, after the vision, the next step becomes trying to, to implement, implement it. it. If I come back to Latin America, uh -huh. you see, look at what's going on there. The whole Hugo Chavez uh -huh. maneuvers. Mo Morales? And, 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 and uh, Evo Morales, Morales. Yeah, and the others Morales coming along. Up. And what they're mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. is saying, look, this is not working. Yeah. And the best they could do is go back to mm. Karl Marx uh -huh. yeah. and a vision that hasn't worked. All right, right. And, and, they're all, and all there the is economic, nobody uh -huh. to come along mm -hmm. with some alternative uh -huh. that you could say, wait a second. This is savable uh -huh. if we can only include the rest of humanity or if we can find in these the lost court or what's needed or something. And it would seem to me, like you and I have talked a great deal, the, 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 the problem is in the widespread acceptance within that economic theoretical understanding, the labor theory of value itself. Okay. And that <laughs> informs and This is one everything. of we the assumptions built into the economics that gave rise to the corporate transformation and, the and the financial markets and whatever the change the in governmental so structure. So we don't have an economic philosophy and we don't have one. We don't have a world the, view. Uh, and also Lord Keynes warned us. I bring. I have to get a reprint of that and get it up on the site. And Lord Keynes, in, 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 beyond outsourcing, beyond all that stuff, You've got, he had a 1930, he wrote a letter to his grandchildren. He said, beyond all the problems that would be comparable to outsourcing now and that kind of thing, we are going to have technologically induced massive unemployment, oh. which means we are going to have systems developed, systems of, e of extended consciousness that is going to be far outweigh. And the input, the actual input to production by labor, intellectual and physical, is going to be superseded by mm -hmm. technological systems. The technological systems in a corporate mode are all owned by a tiny plutocratic right. class. They have no way of distributing. Mm -hmm. Most people only have a way of getting income by wage slavery, as the Marx would call it. Uh, so they're all caught. We're all necessarily in the, uh, <coughs> on the estate of the Duke who owns it all. And uh, we, we don't have a system of distributing income or allowing capital mm -hmm. to let us do technologically what we might be able to do to bring the benefits of what we're capable of to the whole mass of the system within a larger context. 
we don't have that anymore because we're caught up with this uh, labor uh, theory of value. And one of my favorite quotes mm -hmm. from D. Brown attributed to Chief Sitting Bull, uh -huh. the white man can make everything, he doesn't know how to distribute it. Right. Is and that, that was where really, yeah, this you had that. system is failing, where mm -hmm. the Enlightenment system is failing, mm -hmm. is in the matter of distributing what is produced. When we legitimize greed, mm -hmm. What we were able to do is license those who could take to take as much as possible. From this was good for to them. Give. From those the who might want to give. <laughs> it's in a, the a short term, yeah. that could work. Uh -huh. In the long run, your legitimacy is progress, yeah. and people aren't sharing it. They're sharing less yeah. than they were in the past. And you need a thing that's going right. to include everybody. This is destructive, and unless you can come up with some alternative vision mm -hmm. for an alternative way of organizing mm -hmm. human societies, mm -hmm. you, the only options before you are these rapidly expanding religions. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. All right. What this does, and what I suggested to you at the beginning, well, I got two minutes is setting. Left, so get it down quick to no, a haiku. is setting the problem. Uh -huh. This is the beginning point for the next series of discussions here on conversation. Here on conversation <laughs> and in public access. And in public access, and wherever where you can from. get people together to talk about it, to say, "All right, mm -hmm. we realize." this now let's start thinking of alternatives yeah. think of something new and also, i don't what claim is new? you don't claim mm. to have all of the answers mm. nobody has all of the answers mm. but we've got to start thinking about uh, on a large answers tableau, uh, unless we way. are willing to accept the only alternative visions available uh -huh. and if you look at where the wars today are being fought, yeah, yeah. its religion becomes an important factor. Yeah, it does. In and this, this is at a this. time, and that fundamentalist thing is at a time when the weapon systems you've noticed after 200,000 years have finally got to the point where if they're unleashed... We can make Armageddon been, happen. We can make, but Armageddon, you don't have survivors these days. If you have Armageddon, it's the end of the Not whole Not in this species. world. Not in this world. No. Okay. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah. And that becomes the end, and if we go back to this vision from looking down at the earth, mm. sure it could be destroyed. Mm. Humans have this capacity. No, we have the destro we capacity to wipe out the species, which we haven't had only until just very recently. Okay. So but the, the thing is, are this now the stakes are constantly increasing. We ought to run the credits, I think. You know, <laughs> I think we ought to run the credits on this because we're coming to the end of the, the program. Okay. So the but question is that we don't have answers, but we have to start thinking about answers, and we need a perspective away from detail yeah. that provides a vision that mm -hmm. at least holds up an alternative to mm -hmm. say, hey, wait a second, mm -hmm. we can end a lot of this that seems uh, not to work uh -huh. if we have an alternative. All right, and we might do that by saying, what has changed? You, there's, a thing, uh, what, there's a thing in the Seder that says, what makes this different or something right. that you yeah. would know from being <laughs> right. the Jewish right. persuasion? But what makes this era different than all of That's history? Right. Transcending scarcity is an Transcending scarcity and being able biggie. to blow ourselves off Those the planet. Those are two parts of a Those thing. Are two parts they should be up on the wall of every think tank, <laughs> right. I would suggest, as a part of a serious Now we have to figure out, one, how to come up with a new vision, and two, how